It takes a tremendous skill set to play on a big stage. It takes all the things that make sports so great. Hard work, perseverance, dedication. It also takes one thing that this slugger had in spades, passion. Ron Santo, the Chicago Cubs player, announcer, and icon, loved baseball. He loved to play it. He loved to call it. His story, the one on the field, but also off the field, is one of a passionate drive to play at a high level despite a health diagnosis that would have sidelined most people. Ronald Edward Santo was born on February 25, 1940. He grew up in Seattle and had summer jobs as a bat boy, groundskeeper, and clubhouse attendant at Six Stadium for the Seattle Rainiers. When he was 14, he made the all-star Babe Ruth team in Seattle, and his team competed in the 1954 Babe Ruth World Series. Santo hit a grand slam and his team won. Santo was a talented multi-sport athlete. He made the varsity baseball team at Franklin High School as a freshman, where he played third base until his senior year. When the catcher got injured, he moved into that role because of his strong arm. He received all sorts of accolades, including the Hearst All-Star Award, and selection to the national all-star team, which played in New York. Scouts were impressed with Santo and pursued him fervently. But his loyalty remained to Dave Kosher, a scout for the Cubs, who he met during his sophomore year. The two became good friends and Kosher encouraged and supported Santo. Even when other teams offered him more money, he signed with Chicago, believing it was the best fit for him and the one that gave him the best chance to play in the big leagues. But Santo's chances for on-field success were threatened by a routine physical exam. At age 18, Santo was diagnosed with type 1 juvenile diabetes. At the time, the life expectancy of a juvenile diabetic was thought to be 25 years. On the cusp of his MLB dreams coming true, Santo was filled with a sense of urgency. He educated himself about the disease and taught himself how to administer insulin injections. Santo kept it a secret from the public for over a decade. Santo attended the Cubs rookie camp in Mesa, Arizona in 1959. He met Billy Williams, a fellow rookie, and the two became fast, lifelong friends. During the camp, Ron played catcher for a stint and hit the ball all over the park. At the end of the camp, Hall of Famer hitting instructor Rogers Hornsby gathered up all of the prospects. Going down the line, he pointed to each one, offering critiques. You you might as well go home. You won't get by A-ball. You forget A-ball. You won't get past C-ball. It was brutal. But to Santo, he said, you can hit in the big leagues right now. He made a similar statement to Williams, the only other player Hornsby said would make it. Hornsby's predictions were correct. Santo and Williams were the only two that made it to the majors. Santo was in the farm system for only one year and three months. He was moved from catcher to third base as part of the grooming process to become the replacement for Alvin Dark, the Cubs' third baseman. He finally got his chance mid-season in 1960. He was called up to the Cubs and began his 15-year Major League career. He was an All-Star for nine seasons and a Gold Glove Award winner for five consecutive seasons. He batted 300 or more and hit 30 or more home runs four times. 
He's the only third baseman in MLB history to achieve eight consecutive seasons with over 90 runs batted in. He hit 342 home runs and drove in 1,331 runs. Santo was part of a core group of players who led the Cubs back into contention in the late 1960s. He played alongside Hall of Famers and Cub greats Ernie Banks, Ferguson Jenkins, and Billy Williams. In 1969, Santo was so excited by his teammate's clutch win he ran down the third base line and clicked his heels three times. Afterwards, the manager requested him to continue this celebration to bolster his team. Santo kept up the heel clicks. It showcased his effervescence for his teammates and for winning. Cubs fans loved it. His opponents did not. In 1971, Ron Santo shared with the public about his health condition. While some teammates and media knew of his diabetes diagnosis, they respected his wishes to keep it private. Most teammates had no idea. Santo shared, I was always careful not to give myself a shot of insulin in the locker room in front of anybody. I always did it in private. He gauged his blood sugar levels based on his mood. If he believed his sugar to be low, he snacked on a candy bar. Santos said that the diabetes drove him on the field. It was one reason I played so hard. I kept thinking my career could end any day. I never really wanted out of the lineup. The diabetes thing was hanging over my head. In 1974, Santo was traded to the Crosstown Rivals, the Chicago White Sox. He was their designated hitter, which he despised. He wanted to play the field. At the end of the season, Santo retired. He was 34. After Santo retired, he worked as a vice president of sales at Torco Oil and enjoyed spending time with his family. But his passion for the game brought him back to it. In 1990, Ron Santo joined the broadcasting booth with Pat Hughes for the WGN radio broadcast of Cubs games. Their show, named the Pat and Ron Show, delighted fans with Santo's unabashed enthusiasm, emitting cheers and groans during the game. Ron Santos' health suffered as the years went by. Due to his diabetes, both legs had to be amputated below the knee. He had heart bypass surgery and had his bladder removed due to bladder cancer. Through it all, Pat Hughes said, he never complained. He wanted to have fun. He wanted to talk baseball. He considered going to games therapeutic. He enjoyed himself in the booth right to the end. Ron Santo died in December of 2010, at the age of 70. Pat Hughes said he absolutely loved the Cubs. The Cubs have lost their biggest fan. Cubs chairman Tom Ricketts described Santo as the heart and soul of Cubs fans. We knew him for his passion, his loyalty, his great personal courage, and his tremendous sense of humor. His ashes were scattered across Wrigley Field. Ron Santo enjoyed many honors in his life. In 1999, he was named to the Cubs All-Century Team. In 2003, his number 10 jersey was retired by the Cubs, joining fellow teammates Ernie Banks, number 14, and Billy Williams, number 26. In 2004, he was honored by the state of Washington and inducted into the Washington High School Hall of Fame. Not only did Ron Santo play passionately, and successfully, 
on the big stage, but he used the big stage to do big things. He raised over $65 million for juvenile diabetes research and hosted the Ron Santo Walk to Cure Diabetes in Chicago, a fundraiser that continues to this day. Much to the dismay of Cubs fans, Ron Santo did not live to see his induction into the Baseball Hall of Fame. This honor didn't come around until 2012. To honor him, after the announcement, the Cubs squad began their game that day with a heel click. Thanks for watching Heartbeats on the Sports Beat. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next inspiring sports story.